Vostok 1 was launched on April 12, 1961 at 6.07 a.m. UTC from Baikonur Cosmodrome's Site No. 1, hereafter known as Gagarin's Start. The mission was to launch the first human into space and into orbit and return that human safely back to the surface. The person chosen for this mission was Yuri Gagarin, a 27-year-old pilot who was in excellent physical condition and also very likable an important quality for a person who had become the face of the Soviet space program. A week before the launch, the head of cosmonaut training, Nikolai Kamanin, was still undecided about whether Gagarin or Hermann Titov should get the flight. Titov was the stronger candidate, but the second mission, Vostok 2, was a much more taxing whole-day mission, whereas Vostok 1 was just a single orbit. Kamanin opted to have Titov handle the more difficult mission. That said, both cosmonauts had emerged at the top of the selection process. Vostok 1 followed a long series of Karabal Sputnik tests, which included dogs as well as mannequins named Ivan Ivanovich. The Soviet Union was confident it was ahead of the competing American program, and the lift capacity of its R-7-based launchers easily outmatched the Thors and Atlases available to the Americans at the time. But the United States was initially only aiming for a suborbital flight, so there was the potential that the U.S. could get the first person into space, though not to orbit. Still, the testing program for Gagarin's flight had the time to be thorough, and they knew it because the American program, unlike the Soviet one, was quite public. That was fortunate because the Karabal Sputnik phase had more than its fair share of malfunctions that made clear that Vostok 1 remained a daring, potentially dangerous mission. The Vostok K rocket launched Gagarin's Vostok spacecraft into a 327 km by 169 km orbit at a 65 degree inclination. The orbit was supposed to be low enough that orbital decay would bring the craft down in 10 days in case the retro rockets had an issue. Gagarin had enough supplies to potentially survive for that time. However, the apoapsis of 327 km was higher than expected, resulting in a 20 day decay time. This information and the concern it caused was not communicated to Gagarin, nor was the fact that re-entry forces might be greater than expected. At launch, Gagarin famously said, Let's go, Hoyahare, and communication through the launch was good with Sergei Korolev, the designer of the R-7 and instigator of the Soviet manned space program himself, on the other end of the line. After launch, Gagarin reported in to a series of ground stations, and either received frustratingly brief messages back, or his sent messages were not received at all. On re-entry, Gagarin reported peak forces in excess of 10 Gs. The capsule survived, and was not at all as shiny as it had started out. While the capsule had a parachute, the impact on the ground was deemed too sudden to be safe. The capsule had been fitted with an ejection seat based on Karabal Sputnik experiences anyway, so Gagarin was instructed to eject at 7 km altitude and parachute down separate from the capsule. The higher orbit meant that Gagarin landed 2,800 km from the planned area near Baikonur. He was met by a frightened farmer and her daughter, and the rest, as they say, is history. This was the beginning of human spaceflight, and Yuri Gagarin will be remembered as the first person in space for as long as there are humans to remember it. Thank you for watching this mission profile of Vostok 1.